Well, let's bring in our UK correspondent and royal expert, Jonathan Sacerdotti. He joins us live from London. Good to see you, Jonathan. So Meghan Markle says this documentary is their opportunity to tell their side of the story. The couple have argued they have long been vilified in the media. Does this latest set of episodes, which you have seen, help make their case that they are victims of an immoral tabloid press and an antiquated and restrictive set of royal rules? Tell us more. I have seen it, all six hours of it for my sins. And I'll tell you, it threw some big punches towards the British royal family. Uh, the accusations that the couple made, many of which were crammed into the last three episodes where there was a bit more meat to the bones, uh, are that they were treated very unfairly by the palace who briefed the press against them, literally, Meghan says, feeding her to the wolves. Uh, they say that the mail and the court case that Meghan brought against the mail newspaper group uh, ended up causing her miscarriage, though, of course, Harry says you can't prove that, but he feels that the stress of that legal case is what caused her to miscarry in her late 30s. And they say that the general coverage that they received was overly intrusive, manipulative and lying. He also said that his own family uh, in a closed door meeting when they were trying to arrange their exit from the United Kingdom and the royal family uh, shouted at them. Prince William is said to have yelled at him. Prince Charles said to have said things that weren't true. And the late Queen apparently sat there and took it all in quietly. Some may be thinking that that was a wise move because whatever she'd said would just have been repeated now on Netflix. Uh, he said that the royal family is protecting itself, was willing to tell lies about them in order to protect itself, and was willing to brief the press against them in order to cover up stories that they didn't want covered about more important royals. So for a couple wanting privacy, Jonathan, many questioning the need to publicly slam the royal family and the media, as you're describing now, some suggest an actress might have a fair idea of the way the press works, or is there a need for the media to shoulder some of the blame here and to possibly review the way it covers the personal lives of this couple, or at least the paparazzi, the way it covers their relatives and their friends? Well, complaints about how the tabloids and paparazzi do behave surrounding celebrities and specifically the royal family aren't new. Uh, the programme was very keen repeatedly to point out that they saw the treatment of Meghan as very similar to that of, of Diana, the late Princess of Wales. Uh, now, uh, whether or not that's a valid criticism on their part, we, we can debate until the cows come home. I think it's certainly true that the press must feel intrusive to them, uh, but it doesn't seem that they've behaved, many are saying in the UK, in a way that suggests that they genuinely genuinely dislike press attention. Since leaving the royal family, people in the UK are increasingly arguing they appear to have courted far more press attention. Uh, and they have indeed denied that privacy was ever why they left. They've said after the release of the first three episodes, because that was a criticism levelled at them, uh, that it wasn't about privacy. It was about wanting not to be lied about and wanting not to be briefed about against uh, against their will. Uh, of course, people will look at this and, and, and see it as and make their own decisions. Some will be sympathetic to the couple and say that the royal family treated them badly, that they deserve their happiness and freedom that they found now, and that if they're criticising the family, well, maybe it deserves it. But others, and I think this is more of a mainstream opinion here in the UK, are very much against what's going on, because even if people were willing to accept that maybe Harry wanted out, uh, Meghan wanted out with him, uh, they hoped that perhaps they'd live a quieter life overseas and that they wouldn't keep raking over something that they said had hurt them so much, their time within the royal family. But that seems to be the currency they have. Uh, they're getting paid very handsomely for it by Netflix and similarly in publishing deals and Spotify also with the podcasts. And those are the bits that I think people are listening out for and watching for and reading for. It's the royal family gossip. So once again, the royal family is serving uh, one of its many purposes, and that is as a real life living, breathing soap opera. There's that specific moment, Jonathan, in the first set of episodes in which Meghan reenacts this exaggerated curtsy and Harry looks so mortified at her antics as she mocks the tradition and says that she had no idea what to do as an American when she met the Queen. It seems so disrespectful. It seemed in really poor taste. One wonders why Netflix even included this part in its series. What is the British public saying about what they have seen so far, particularly that mocking episode. 
I think people in the UK, even who aren't in favour of, of the monarchy, Republicans as we call them, most of them actually really loved uh, Elizabeth II, the late Queen. And so I think that signs of disrespect like uh, that was perceived to be are, are things that trouble most people. I think the mocking curtsy, the mocking uh, how nice to meet you, your majesty, um, was seen very much as, as the mask slipping. Uh, that This is a very carefully produced and edited portrait of these two. Uh, but in that moment, people, I think, thought that Meghan was being extremely disrespectful and they read into Prince Harry's face, as you say, uh, some some level of discomfort with what she was saying on camera there. It's hard to know whether that is necessarily what he was feeling or, or whether that was his just na natural resting face. He certainly didn't criticise it or say anything or stop them putting it into the programme. Uh, but that is, I think, one iconic moment that will be remembered because it just seemed disrespectful to many in Britain. Uh, plenty of people have asked, you know, would she have done the same about bowing in Japan to the royal family? Uh, had she married in, into that family? Uh, is it OK to mock the traditions, uh, ancient traditions, respectful traditions of different countries and cultures uh, if they're white? Because many of her complaints, of course, were that the British royal family is not respectful of non-white culture. Uh, and so, of course, there have been plenty of parts of the press in the UK that have pointed out that this seemed like disrespect on her part for British culture. Respect for one significant other's family, but again, that's a separate discussion. Very briefly, Jonathan, Palace Aids no doubt would have been preparing for the latest set of episodes, more bombshells. Are they responding to these claims that the royal household leaked negative stories as part of a war against Meghan? What are they saying so far? Briefly, please. Well, so far, there's been no official response from the palace or any individual members of the royal family. Whether or not they'll be able to keep that silence remains to be seen. After that big Oprah interview, they did make a couple of very carefully worded comments, and we maybe will see the same thing. We'll just have to wait and see. We certainly will be watching. Thank you so much, as always, for your update and your analysis. UK correspondent and royal expert Jonathan Sacerdoti, live from London. Thank you, Jonathan.